Hi, Seven. Um, I hope you're all well. We're on lesson nine of COAST today. And again, I have attached a Word document and the PDF to show my homework for you to follow along on a worksheet. So you can print it out and write on it. You can just follow along on another piece of paper or you can complete it on the computer. It's entirely up to you. So today we're going to have a look at a case study in the UK. So we're going to have a look at Holderness Coast. So the first thing for you to do is to describe the location of Holderness. There's three maps there um, showing you where Holderness, Holderness Coast is. Um, so you can just describe the location in your own words. So the first map shows you that Holderness Coast is on the east coast of the UK. The second map shows you that it's in England and it's in Yorkshire. So Lancashire, our county is over here. It's in Yorkshire. It's on the east coast of Yorkshire. And then the third map um, zooms into the coast a little bit more and gives you some names of some places along the coastline. So it goes from Flamborough Head to Spurn Head. So following on from that, we're going to have a look at five and six, five or six places along the coastline. I'm going to link Kilnsey and Spurnhead at the end together. And um, so you can just make notes. I left a box on the worksheet for you to just make notes as we go along. So let's start with Flamborough Head. So Flamborough Head is here. And this map just shows you the geology, so just the rock type. So you can see here that Flamborough Head is made up of chalk, which is a resistant rock. And um, it's hard to erode takes a long time to erode, so therefore it creates this headland. So Flamborough Head is a headland, but there are some original features such as caves, arches and stacks on Flamborough Head. Mappleton is the second location. So Mappleton is just south of Hornsey, you can see on the map. And um, it's a settlement, so it's a village of approximately 50 properties, but it's subject to intense erosion of about two metres per year. Um, Mappleton is made up of boulder clay, which you can see on the geology map. So Mappleton's around here and it's made up of boulder clay. Boulder clay is easy to erode, it's soft rock, it's not very resistant and therefore it erodes quite quickly at Mappleton. So this is just a picture, a photograph to show you how sea defences can um, help protect the coastline. So Mappleton has a lot of sea defences protecting um, the settlement, protecting the village there. So in the north section of this, of this um, picture, you can see um, there is quite a lot of beach. And this is because the sea defences are helping build up that beach. They're protecting the beach from being eroded and helping material be deposited there. Here, there are no sea defences. So in the southern section, there's no sea defences. You can see here, the beach is quite exposed. Um, you can see that the sediment's quite exposed to erosion. Um, it's not as big and not as built up as in the northern section. So this is subject to erosion. So therefore, sea defences do, um, some sea defences do help build up a beach and try and protect that cliff from erosion. So Alborough is just south of Mappleton, but doesn't have any sea defences. So whereas Mappleton has quite a lot, Alborough doesn't have any, and therefore Alborough, the cliffs are rapidly eroding. And you can see here on this picture. So some residents think that the sea defences at Mappleton has made things worse at Albra. They think that there's been knock-on effects. They think that because of the, all the sea defences um, being built at Mappleton, it's causing um, Albra to erode qu more quickly, erode quicker than it would do if there weren't any sea defences at Mappleton. So you can see here some of the um, effects of erosion. So you can see that the road's been cut off, it's been, some of the road's been lost. See, it's all cracking um, where the cliff underneath it's weakening. And you can see here the properties are very close to the edge of the cliff. And you can see the coastline where it's been eroded. The next place is Withensea. So that's just south again. Um, this has substantial sea defences because it attracts tourists. So they're trying to main maintain the beach of Withensea um, because it attracts tourists. Next lesson, we're going to have a look in more detail at sea defences, but I will just name a few as we go through and then you'll learn about how they work um, next lesson. So here you've got rock armour and you've also got groins that stretch out along, along the beach, so from the coast to the sea. And you've also got things like sea walls as well. So there's quite a lot of um, 
a variety of sea defences at Willensee to try and protect the beach and protect that coastline um, and help build up the beach. But we'll have a look in more detail how these sea defences work next lesson. Then we've got Kilnsea. Um, so Kilnsea is an old, old settlement, but it's now been completely lost. So still, sea defences were built there in the early 1900s. Um, but they're old now and therefore they're crumbling. So erosion is being allowed to progress rapidly. The, the sea defences haven't been replaced or maintained or looked after. And therefore they're getting old and wearing away and not able to protect the coastline as they once would have. Um, at Kilnsea, you've also got um, just south, you've got Spurn Head and you've got this spit. So you can try and remember back to last lesson on how spits form as well. So this is just um, to show you the rate of erosion at Kilnsey. So you've got the bluebell in here, so a pub. And this is how close it currently is to the coastline. So there's a sea, so here's your co there's a little bit, bit of a beach and here's the coastline. You can see there's not that much of a beach. This is an old map. So you can see this is where the sea is. So this is where the coastline once was. So Bluebell Inn used to be actually quite uh, far away from the coastline. There was a lot, a lot more between Bluebell Inn and, and the coastline, whereas now it's a lot closer. And actually, the, this coastline has been drawn on this map. You can see very faintly it says line of current line of seafront. Okay, so all of this here has been lost to erosion at some point in the past. And therefore, in the future, Bluebell Inn might be at risk of um, being lost to erosion as well. So on the worksheet, I put a map. Um, and what I want you to do is annotate um, with the reasons why we should protect Hold Nest Coastline. Now, in a minute, I'm going to show you the map with the annotations on. But there are others that you can put on. Um, so here's the map. So some of the reasons why we should protect it. There's some settlements at um, Hornsey at Mappleton. Remember, there's a village at Mappleton of about 50 properties. There's farmland and cliffs all the way down the coastline. Within Sea, it's not just a settlement, it's also a tourist attraction as well. So, a lot of businesses will thrive from the tourists um, coming to the area. So, that's what another reason why we want to protect that. So, there's other reasons um, as well that we've gone through that you can add on as well. So why is Holdness disappearing? It's one of Europe's fastest eroding coastlines and the average rate of erosion is about two meters per year. So you can see the Roman coastline and the lost towns in the red dot, the red dots. So they're already the towns that have been lost. So in the future, there, there probably is gonna be a lot more as well because that coastline is still eroding about two meters per year. Um, it's eroding because of geology, so rocks. So remembering that the area is made up mostly of um, boulder clay, that very soft clay that's very easy to erode. About three miles of land has been lost and at least 23 towns and villages since the Roman era. And the main processes of erosion are hydraulic action and abrasion. So we've looked at quite a lot of causes of erosion along Holdness coastline, but just have a think, what is a cause? What do we mean by a cause of erosion? So a cause is a reason why something, especially something bad, happens. So a cause is just why is erosion happening along the coastline? So we know that the main cause of, cause of erosion along Holdness Coast is the boulder clay, the geology. So that weak, soft clay that's easily, to, easily weathered and eroded. But also the beaches are narrow. There's not much beach protecting the cliffs. We've got the prevailing winds from the northeast um, that create these waves to attack the coastline. So it'll be destructive waves um, that are created by northeasterly wind. Large waves undermine the cliffs through abrasion, hydraulic action, freeze thaw weathering, and solutions. So we've got different types of weathering and erosion taking place on the coastline. And longshore drift carries the eroded material southwards. So that longshore drift is moving the beach material southward, southwards. So 
We've looked at cause. So if the cause is why, then the effect must be what. So an effect is an event that happens because of a cause. It's something that happens because of the why. So we're going to have a look at what is the difference between a primary and secondary effect. Now I'm going to show you examples of both primary effects of erosion along the coastline and secondary effects. We look at primary and secondary effects quite a lot in geography. So we look at primary and secondary effects of erosion, of um, a volcanic eruption, of an earthquake, of a tropical storm. So primary and secondary effects come up quite a lot and they're different from each other. So what I want you to do is take a look at these examples of primary effects of erosion and then secondary effects of erosion. What do we mean by primary and secondary? How have we categorised these effects into primary effects and secondary effects? What is the difference between them? So some of the primary effects of erosion are landslides, mud flows. Um, so it might be the water that's eroding, the waves that erode in the coastline, mixing with sediment, creating landslides and mud flows. You've got rock falls, so the weakening of um, the cliffs of the rock creates rock falls and the cliffs to collapse. And then the erosion on the coastline, so the coastline um, being eroded backwards and losing that coastline. And then secondary effects of erosion are things like loss of housing, so that's a social effect, loss of farms, caravans and other businesses, so it might be that the Blue Belt Inn is lost, their economic and social impacts, um, loss of habitat, so environment, environmental impacts, loss of um, plants and animals' ha homes, and then loss of communications, so that's an economic or a social impact, so it might be that phone lines are lost. You can also add in there loss of infrastructure, um, so the roads that are lost, the railway lines that are lost and affected. So what we do is um, note down the primary and secondary effects. You can add on some more that you might be able to think of or that we've talked about. And then I want you to answer this question. What is the difference between a primary effect and a secondary effect? And then next lesson at the beginning, I will go through what the difference is between a primary effect and a secondary effect. And I might use some of your answers um, to show the difference as well. So can you please make sure that you upload all your work to show my homework and then there will also be a quiz on show my homework. Please only complete the quiz once you've completed all your work as well. So thank you for watching. If there's any questions just um, send me a message on show my homework. Thank you.